Well, a very good afternoon to you, Alicia. Just to bring you a bit up to speed, we understand that the Deputy President of the country, Soro Ramaphosa, who was meant to give a keynote address, will not be giving one at the memorial service. We understand that might be perhaps due to uh, some commitments, of course, that he had. You would know that he was the SADC facilitator relating in the run-up to the Lesotho election. So there seems to have been uh, quite a delay. You would recall yesterday he did give a press conference in Lesotho as well, following the successful elections in that country but certainly for the families a day of closure when the remains of the of these loved ones did return many of them were saying they've been waiting for decades for this to happen finally these families can get closure and they're hoping that this will heal somehow the wounds of many South Africans if we look back to where South Africa was during the apartheid era and the democracy that was so hard fought for and uh, the you know the gains and the enjoyment that we as South Africans uh, now get to, to, to get as a result of this democracy in this country. But certainly from the remarks inside from both the Kotane and the Marx family, many saying, uh, you know, both families are grateful to each other. They're grateful that that letter was written by Makotane to President Jacob Zuma to facilitate the repatriation of uh, the bodies of these two icons. You would remember, of course, in uh, February uh, 2014, that's when uh, President Jacob Zuma had visited Russia and together with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, had finally reached an agreement that the remains of these two international struggle icons were in Russia at the time of their death to rally support against the apartheid government uh, are finally back on African soil on the home of their birth. Chris Alder, now again, the Department of Arts and Culture is to be highly lauded for this. How do they feel about this great initiative? Are we likely to see more repatriations of more lost individuals? What seems to be clear, certainly clear, Alicia, here from uh, the African National Congress, the South African uh, Communist Party, as well as government, is that there are many others who still do not know where their loved ones are. Many who fought in the struggle, those who died in exile, many of those families are certainly saying they would want to see the repatriation of all South Africans who died away from home, fighting for the liberation of this country, for the remains of those individuals to come home. And I recall in a conversation at the Vatracliff Air Force Base with the ANC's Gwede Mantashi, it was a question certainly that I posed to him to ask about those known and unknown who fought in the struggle. What would the expectation then be for the loved ones? Uh, 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 would want their loved ones to, would want the families to return home? And certainly what his, his remark to me was that he would call for patience with many of these families. Uh, they are working on, on, on the repatriation of certainly many of the South Africans that they know of who died in exile fighting for the liberation of this country. So that has not been pushed off the radar at all, Alicia. Certainly it is something that is on the agenda and these families certainly would want to see at a later stage their loved ones also returning to South Africa to give them closure as well about what truly happened to their loved ones wherever they were fighting or rallying for support against the apartheid government during the dark days in South Africa. All right, Chris Alder, tell us a bit about the current memorial service. I must say, Alicia, the memorial service is quite poorly attended. We saw Minister Tulas Nguesi actually comment about the poor attendance at the memorial service of these two struggle icons. But uh, certainly they're saying perhaps it's a Friday. Many other people have commitments. They couldn't make it, of course, uh, uh, to the memorial service. But they might be hoping for a better attendance, of course, at uh, the funerals that you just mentioned, which will be taking place this month, the reburial of the remains of both Moses Katane as well as J.B. Marks. But the, 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 it doesn't take away from the atmosphere, certainly, inside. We see the South African Communist Party would recall that at, uh, during the, at, the, at the time of death of both of these struggle icons, one had been the chairperson of the South African Communist Party. And, uh, you know, really, uh, the celebration of the returns 
of these remains continues inside and you can see the jubilation and uh, a sense of relief on the faces of both of these families that certainly they'll be able to get closure and the legacy or the untold stories of Moses Kotane and J.B. Marx can continue to be told for those who don't know the significant contribution that these two struggle icons have made towards South Africa's democracy today. Thanks for that. That's SABC reporter at City Hall, Ms. Chrysalda Lewis, giving us the latest at the memorial services of struggle stalwarts Moses Kotane as well as J.B. Marx, whose remains were repatriated from Russia last week.